Welcome to a lesson on definite integration of vector valued functions. To determine the definite integral of a vector valued function, we integrate each component separately. So looking at our first example, because the vector valued function only has an x and y component, we'll have two definite integrals. This is equal to the definite integral from zero to two of e raised to the power of four t dt times i minus the definite integral from zero to two. Instead of the square root, we use the one-half power, so we'll have the quantity t plus one to the one-half dt times j. And now we'll integrate. Looking at this first integral, notice how we'll have to use u substitution, where u is equal to four t and differential u is equal to four dt. So if we divide both sides by four, if we write this as e to the u, we'll have an extra factor of one-fourth, which means the antiderivative is one-fourth e to the four t. But remember, this is definite integration, so we have our limits of integration from zero to two times i, and then minus, this may appear it requires u substitution, but notice the inner function is u equals t plus one, therefore differential u is dt. So we can use the basic power rule here, so we'll add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. One half plus one is three halves, and then instead of dividing by three halves, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have two thirds times the quantity t plus one to the three halves power, again from zero to two, times j. Now we'll evaluate, we'll first substitute two for t, so we'll have one fourth e to the eighth, four times two is eight, minus one fourth e to the zero, times i, and then here we'll have two thirds, when t is two we'll have times three to the three halves, and then minus two thirds times one to the three halves times j. Let's go ahead and factor out one fourth here. e to the zero is equal to one, so we'll have one fourth times e to the eighth minus one times i, and then minus, here we'll factor out two thirds, leaving us with three to the three halves minus one times j. Now let's take a look at a second example. Notice how the vectored value function has an x, y, and z component, so now we'll have three definite integrals. Now when we integrate, notice how here we have to perform u substitution, where we'll let u equal sine t, Therefore, differential u is equal to cosine t dt, which is a perfect fit. We can write this in terms of u as the integral of u squared, and then because cosine t dt is equal to du, this is just du, which means the antiderivative in terms of t would just be u to the third divided by three, or sine cubed t, divided by three. And now for the next integral, notice that u is equal to cosine t this time, because this is raised to the second power. So differential u is equal to negative sine t dt, which means negative du is equal to sine t dt, so in terms of u, this would be negative u squared du. Again, sine t dt is equal to negative du, giving us this negative. And then for the antiderivative in terms of u, we'll have negative u to the third divided by three, which would be in terms of t minus cosine cubed t divided by three, And then finally, the integral of two with respect to t would be two t, so we have two t times k. 
So we first substitute t equals pi over two. Sine pi over two is one, so we'll have one cubed divided by three, that's one third, minus when t is zero, sine zero is zero, so it'll be minus zero times i minus cosine of pi over two is zero, so we'd have zero minus cosine zero is one, so we'd have one cubed divided by three or one third times j, and then plus, notice when t is pi over two, we have two times pi over two, which is just pi, and then when t is zero, it's minus zero times k. So we're left with one third i, this is minus negative one third j, or plus one third j, and then plus pi k. Okay, I hope you found this explanation helpful.